And I have with me... Evelyn Huynh. Yes, Evelyn is a grant writing guru. And as we know, with our different projects and creative endeavors, we're always looking for ways to make money. <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, so I'm here to talk about fiscal sponsorship. Has anyone heard about fiscal sponsorship or are familiar with it? I've heard of it. Okay. So what so as we know, the system is always set up for us not to know. It's getting better, but it can be more rapid. So a lot of times grants that you see are for nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So you're like, Dad, I can't even fill this out because I ain't no nonprofit and it takes too much time to actually start one of the theatrics. So what fiscal sponsorship is, a nonprofit like us, the Arts Council, can be a fiscal sponsor. So what that means is you can use our 501c3 status to apply for nonprofit loans. I mean loans, Lord. Grants. <laughs> nonprofit grants. Um, and it's a small fee, which you would just put that fee, I think it's like 6% or something like that. You, if you need a thousand dollars, just do a thousand plus that six, so that way you have your whole thousand. Um, and that's a loophole of ways to be able to get funding. Um, the Arts Council is a fiscal sponsorship for arts projects um, or arts organizations. So it could be just a one-time project, or we can like fiscal sponsor you to the point where you get to now and open my own nonprofit, like I don't need you no more, thank you. Um, um, so if you, that's art, but I don't want you to be discouraged if you are here for business and it's not so much arts or creative, you can definitely Google fiscal sponsorships, they're everywhere. Um, if you are an advocate and you are more into like organizing and protesting, I believe a Better Way Foundation, they do fiscal sponsorship for projects such as that as well. So if you're interested, please let me know, I'm going to give you guys these cards. Um, Arts Council has the sandbox. It's a free space for creatives. You can have events. You can say, listen, I want to come and practice my drums. Whatever you want is free of charge. You can charge people for your events. You take all the money. We don't take anything because we know that space is really needed. Culturalists, please sign up for culturalists. A lot of times, all the Arts Councils in the state get emails like, hey, I'm looking for a photographer. I'm looking for a writer. Do you know anybody? So instead of us gatekeeping and only suggesting people that's on the top of our head, we send them directly to this directory. Free of charge to sign up. You can link your PayPal's on there. Um, I know one donor was like, oh, I like this artist. Let me just send them some cash. So sign up. Uh, free membership. We also have the online skill box. This video is being recorded to go onto the skill box. We have about 25 videos right now. Um, if you have a skill that you want to share on the skill box, we do pay you and we have a videographer that will record you. So it goes on there. Um, Amber the Tax Lady has a few videos on there of like how to be an LLC, how to do your business taxes, um, marketing and media. Brianna Regine, who's going to be doing um, some speaking today, she's on there. Canva 101, if you've never used Canva and you want to really know how to use it, we have those type of videos on there free of charge because a lot of times we give money, but then once that money's gone, it's like, okay, what do I do next? I'd rather give you the skill set and teach you how to fish, then that way you will never start. So that's that. And then, of course, our grants page. If you're not from New Haven, still go to our grants page because we um, post statewide grants as well as federal grants also on that page. But also, if you're not from New Haven, but you're doing a New Haven project that serves the greater New Haven, which is 15, this Meriden, Wallingford, all the places in the greater New Haven, you can still apply. So that's all I got to say. I'm going to pass it on over. I want you guys to get this. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be here all day because it's lit. Um, I'm kind of old, so I might come to the And thank you for your time. You're next. So I was just wondering, and if you all could just um, not shout, but just share, what kind of art do you do? What, um, what brought, uh, what do you do that brought you here? Yeah, I do like programming, um, photography, culinary. Okay, very cool. How about you all? Uh, I'm an artist and graphic designer. I'm also like mural projects and just Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm a ceramicist and I'm also a creative, so I do a lot of things. Just mm -hmm. or, 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 oh, random things. Um, yeah. And if it comes to you. Right. Got it. Right, right, right. Um, I'm an urbanist, a farmer. Okay, very cool. How about you? I'm a filmmaker. Um, Wonderful. I also do uh, programming around arts and skateboarding. Arts and skateboarding, love it. I'm a painter. Painter. Um, I'm a visual artist. Visual artist, wonderful. Well, I'm a creative, I'm a painter, photographer. Wonderful. I'm a photographer, mixed media artist. 
And you still owe me a business card. <laughs> Peter. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And how many of you have uh, applied for grants? Ah, more than I expected. And how many of you decided not to pursue those grants? <laughs> so you all applied for the grants that um, you actually um, went through and applied for the grants? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. What 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 was? Could you um, share a grant that you had pursued? Um. So it was a free center independent, like independent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um. Yeah. I that was the first time that I've ever gotten a big um like amount for a grant. Before it was like usually like two fifty to five hundred dollars. This was like around like five k. Also Linda, also one as well. So it was like the biggest amount of money that I got. Yeah. And what um, was it intimidating to you? How, how, what was the process like for you in terms um, of um, working on that grant the application? Process, it was it was a little like daunting and scary because I never really put my ideas into writing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a writer, I just, I, yeah. I, I'm a visual artist. Yeah. So like, I see things, but like putting that in together, like together in words is like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I tried my best and I got it, so that was cool. <laughs> it's just like continuing that, because I know that there's a language to the writing. Yeah. And that you have to like really convey. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. And how about you? You said you had applied for a grant. Um, yeah, but applied a few. Okay. Uh, Park, mm. actually around the corner from here. So okay. I had to, um, Scandalberry Skate Park. Um, that worked out, so it was a matching grant between the Center for the Arts, uh, the Yale Sportsman Center, and the, the New Haven Innovation Collaborative. Did you hire a grant writer, or did you do it yourself? Uh, did it, did it yourself. And what was that experience like for you? Um, it was fine, a bit arduous. But uh, we gave ourselves a lot of lead time to do quite a few drafts to make sure that we could really dial it in. Um, here now, my team that worked on that project, we're in the process of writing um, or looking, probably looking for a grant writer um, for a, a larger set of grants, um, a lot more money to do some more skate parts. Okay, you sound like you know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to cover, um, do like a very brief grant writing 101 for you all. Um, I think what I'm sharing with you with grant writing really applies to you as an individual artist. Um, just right off the bat, what is your mission? And this is, this is such a powerful question, whether it applies to pursuing grants or pursuing corporate sponsorships, or just any sort of fundraising, what is your mission? Um, could you share what your mission is or what you shared on the grant application? Yeah, so um, the organization that I uh, work with, Skate Haven, uh, our mission is to use skateboarding as a vehicle for positive impact. In and that is clear and to the point. Um, mission statements don't have to be long. They shouldn't be a paragraph. They should be simple, clear, where anyone, any layman, someone that doesn't know anything about skateboard, could understand that mission statement. And so just as an individual artist, what is your mission? And um, with that, what kind of impact do you want to make? If you want to reach out to underserved communities, if you want to reach out to um, uh, say, the disabled community, or maybe um, people that are going through grief or um, struggling with mental health. Um, those are the questions you want to um, ask yourself. 
So that's something, again, it applies to grant writing, but just as you as a writer, um, what is your mission? So I was wondering, um, I need other uh, voices. What, what would you all like um, to do in terms of getting grant funding? What would you, what would you like to do with those funds? Um, back there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I probably want to create uh, as much product as I can and work out more of it. And what kind of product do you create? Uh, clothing. Clothing. Uh, I have a clothing company called Glass House. Okay. It's all sustainable and recycled goods. Ah. Uh, the graphics align a lot with like, the metaphysical world. Okay. And then how would the wider community benefit from that clothing? I mean, I was thinking, I've been um, purchasing clothes through ThreadUp, and um, there's another one. I'm just not, it's like you said, it's like there's so many clothes I donate, it's like why can't I just you know, donate to um, someone else or just keep it going in circulation as opposed to buying new clothes and then we just continue the cycle. So I think the environment is a big one, and especially now um, people are our society is just more aware of the environment and what, how we impact the environment. So I think just right off the bat, um, focusing on that for impact would, would be a nice launching pad to making a compelling grant proposal. Um, how about you? What, what, why would you um, pursue grant funding? What, what's so your I, goal? I'm a nature connection guy yeah. as well as an Herbs, how to grow your own herbs, mm -hmm. how to remedy yourself using herbs and just lessen the use of, what's the word? I feel like pesticides, GMO, yeah, more earth friendly. The mass production of those medicines. Just yeah. Just eliminate those Western together. medicine? Yeah, Western medicine. There, there it is. Thank you. And um, refresh my memory, have you applied for grants? Because I think no. a lot of funders would gravitate to I've that. I've received grants through other, like, other programs who have applied for grants. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I've received money like, through them. But I just think uh, that's just compelling in and of itself. Um, and I think just what I was just saying with the other gentleman, um, it seems like the right time is now in terms of how we as a people are aware of our place in the ecosystem of nature, right? We're part of nature, you know, we're not above nature like we used to think way back when. <laughs> we're a part of nature and what happens to the bees and um, the coral reefs and what have you is going to have an effect on us also. So I just think right off the bat that impact it's just a strong point in terms of pursuing grant proposals. Yeah. Uh, another thing about grant proposals is that um, you want to um, look for grants where you align with their priorities. So there's this myth out there that your mission is enough to win a grant, and unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, because the reality is that um, there's gonna be a lot of other um, people and organizations that are doing similar work to you. So, um, like, I'll just use your example. Um, in terms of, um, you, if you see a funder, their focus is on, say, like, food systems, that sort of thing, and re-examining food systems, that would be a great one for you to pursue. But if it's something like, um, say, um, national security, I'm just gonna make something up. It's like, there's no point 
and pursuing it. Um, but I feel like um, some individuals and nonprofits, they just want to get any funding, and it's, it's a waste of time for the one applying and the funder, too, if the priorities don't align. So you really want to pursue um, funders where, where you're in alignment in terms of their priorities. And same thing with uh, sponsorship, what Rebecca was saying. Um, it makes sense for you all to register with the Arts Council because the priorities line up. Um, it wouldn't make sense for you all to um, register with, um, I don't know, I'm just not doing a good job with making up examples right now. <laughs> uh, maybe engineering, um, that, that wouldn't make sense. Uh, I was just talking with Peter a few minutes ago, and um, we were talking about touch points. How many people has his um, health and wellness uh, uh, community events have touched? And that's something else. Uh, with grant applications, it's this healthy balance between testimonials, right, of people that have truly been impacted by your work. And are you keeping track of how many people you're impacting? It's not fun. It's not pretty. No one, you know, it's more fun to collect testimonials, right? <laughs> but the reality is that funders, they want to have confidence that if they provide you the funding, you're actually going to be able to carry it out. What you said on the proposal, you're actually going to be able to do it. And so that's why it's, um, it's, that, it's that balance between um, what people share is like that art work really impacted me with X amount of people came away with this or X amount of people came out with a higher self-esteem um, or um, greater sense of belonging to their community from, um, from the experience of this artwork. And that's, um, it's not pretty, but um, it's the, the reality of the um, grant writing world. Do y'all have any other questions for me? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I was wanting to like know what goes on during the grant writing. Like, what's what's the process like, and what are some things to like, say like watch out for throughout that process? Ah, uh, so you know, it depends. I sound like a lawyer. <laughs> so it really depends because some. I like, I know community, we have some community banks, they'll give out $2,000, and if it's a 501c3, and you show proof of your 501c3, you're going to get $2,000. Um, that's the minority. <laughs> so 501c3 status is for nonprofit organizations, and so the organization has filed the proper paper, and Rebecca, correct me if I'm wrong, um, filed the proper paperwork. Um, to pretty much say they're working for the public good and they have um, X amount of money that goes back into the organization. So, you know, some of these nonprofits, they're making millions of dollars. There is a profit, but the government says you have to put it back into the organization. Um, if not, they're going to be in trouble and that tax exempt status is going to be pulled and nonprofits are paranoid. Mm, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. Hey, what's up? Are there any uh, grant websites or services that you know that artists can apply to? Or just, you know, I feel like it? Rebecca's a better source, but let me just take this for a bit. Yeah. Uh, so just, um, I feel like arts make Rebecca your best friend after we're done with this. <laughs> with the Arts Council right off the bat and National Endowment for the Arts. Um, also, um, I feel like checking up on the state government. The sites that I know, they're more for nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, Rebecca, you want to take this question? So yeah, um, like CT Office of the Arts is a great one, if you don't know about them already. Mm -hmm. As I said, we post our grants along with state level grants and federal level grants. Okay. So there's some grants that we have on there that's New York based, but it's for the tri state area. Uh -huh. And you can still tap in on those. Um, and we post those frequently um, on our website. 
Um, and yeah, even contacting your city's arts, culture, and um, arts, culture, and tourism department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, if you have something that's good that one people are going to want to come to, it's cultural. You can definitely get tapped in. I'm not sure if any of you guys know Adrian Jefferson. Yep. Like the goat. Um, <laughs> But like you can go to one of those departments and they are really good with like tapping in. And honestly, now is a great time to tap into like your board of eds and your school systems. That's a guaranteed mm -hmm. contract. You want to always get the money if no kids show up or if a bunch of kids show up. Um, with my podcast, outside of working for Arts Council, um, we have the team podcast, the group chat podcast yes. forum, we entertain and inspire. inspiring. We have a podcast in like a few months now, but now we have a youth prog program, and um, we got the REACH grant with Community Foundation. And then through that, Hill House High School was right up the street. It's like, now nah, we want our own for the school. And that's guaranteed money. Um, so tapping into like your board of heads, it's really about selling your product and selling your group. Like she said, what's your mission? Who is going to get impacted by it? Once they know that, especially with our youth and the lack of art in the school systems, <laughs> Yeah. Rebecca, um, Adrian, is that a local person? Yes. Okay, um, is that New Haven? She's the executive director of arts, culture, and tourism for here in New Haven. Write that down. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And introduce I'm yourself. Time, like, yeah. I have yeah. one more question. Yeah, go for it. So this is more pertaining to sponsorship. Okay. So I've, so I've gone down the route where I, like, I create my own like, a plan or you know, mission statement and all that. Yeah. Like, but my thing is sometimes it's hard to lock down the sponsorship or sometimes. So I guess what piece of advice would you say or would, can you give as far as when you're in the rooms, in the conversation with folks that you're potentially going to get a sponsor, sponsor from and like how do you like, I know it's a lot of convincing, it's a lot of, you know. Yeah, like, sure. Uh, what was, what so why don't you take this first and then Rebecca? Okay. So um, Rebecca and I, we, I mean, it's going to be, Similar. So just your mission statement right off the bat. How many people are going to be impacted by your artwork? And do you have past work to show that you have had an impact? And this is what I was discussing with Peter um, before this session, which is um, collecting data. And um, say, for example, uh, if you have data to show, like what, like what I was just sharing, um, mental health, it's really mental and emotional health. I mean, we've been through a lot the past three years, and I feel like this is a great time for artists in terms of, you know, the emotional and mental health, they're just as important as physical health because they're all connected, right? And if you could um, collect um, data through surveys of how, say, um, the attendees or participants, they were like before experiencing your work and how they felt after. Um, that can be compelling. But um, you want to have, in terms of sponsorship, um, it's better if you have some sort of data collected as opposed to just going cold turkey, this is what we plan on. Yeah. Because it gives them a little more confidence. It's like, okay, they might be able to do it. We like their, her artwork, but she might be able to do that. And that just applies to anything, whether it's sponsorship or um, any sort of fundraising in terms of, again, how are you measuring the social impact? Mm -hmm. And I think, Rebecca? Sure. You're basically, I think, alignment with the organization which you're getting the sponsorship, sponsorship is great, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Um, like when you go into a restaurant saying like, hey, we do an in-kind sponsorship, um, you're selling yourself. Um, and I go in it like, I know this is gonna be a dope event, you need to tap into me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I go in with that. When somebody sees your confidence, like, oh, okay, she believes, she's believing what it is that she's selling. So I'm, I'm gonna tap in. You're in your shaky, kind of nervous, you don't really know. It's like, all right, we'll give you a few dollars, but it's like, listen, this is the facts. Everything is about numbers. Um, right now, we're doing the our economic um, project called AEP6, and it's a 
survey that we do every five years. So five years ago, for every one dollar that's spent in the arts, there's another seven that's generated. So you're not only buying a ticket to go see the show, you're gonna go out and have drinks, you're gonna pay for parking. Mm -hmm. um, so like those numbers, everything is always about numbers and money, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those numbers are really good. Um, CT Humanities actually just did a survey with a thousand um, residents of Connecticut, and like 91% agreed that the state should be funding more for the arts. So I'm going to DC in three weeks to advocate for the arts and get federal funding. <coughs> I'm gonna to go to Rosa Delora and be like, yo, the math is math. So what y'all gonna do about it? Um, and I think those numbers are really important. You can get that type of data anywhere. But CTU means they just, I just had a meeting yesterday. So they have a lot of great data and they like broken down by minorities, by age gaps, and single versus two family household versus people, no kids, no kids. So that type of information is nice to have to add into whatever grant that it is you're writing. Because everybody loves numbers. Make sure you yeah. always um, give the source where you got the and uh, where was that source? CT Humanities. CT Humanities. Uh, Everyone write that yeah, down. Yeah, CT Humanities. AEP6 is with the um, Americans for the Arts. If you do Americans for the Arts, AEP6, you'll automatically get the information. And I know that number, the one and seven, I know it's going to skyrocket. Like, we did a lot of spending. And um, as she said, you know, the arts is really how we survived during the pandemic. You was listening to music versus was getting us going, um, you know, at home painting sips. So this is a great time, especially with ARPA money and free money that, that's around. It's a lot of money out here. So. And I think we, I mean, it's a sad state of affairs, but I think I was just reflecting on this with a friend of mine. We all know probably several people that are going through depression and anxiety. Like, I find it very, very disturbing right now. And I feel like you all, what you can contribute is a lot. And just um, think about the big picture on how you're contributing to the betterment of the mental and emotional health of the wider community. And just take some time, think about it, you know, do like a stream of consciousness and get started on that. And then it'll be easier in terms of, oh, how should I pursue this in terms of making a, a social impact? Mental health, kids, and the youth, that's always big um, in changing the development and the lives of future artists. Because you know back in the day it was, oh no, you need a good job. Your art is either high right. or side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, that has evolved and changed now. So those are two big things that you can incorporate within your um, compelling argument or your impact that will really go a long way. And let's add in social and emotional health. Yeah, social and emotional health. And I feel like, Rebecca, with mental health, I, I wish we would use social and emotional health more Absolutely. instead of only mental right, health. Right. Because it's because so, you, yeah. yeah. Being hyperventilating in a big crowd is not Yeah, <laughs> it's like, so right. Normal. And physical, yeah. right? And in physical as well. It's like they all go together. Hey, Sorry. what's up? So I also have a hiking club called More Hike CT. Okay. Where, um, it's also targeted. Social, social and emotional health is a big yeah. like, target in that. And um, I wanted to know if you have any, like, besides that, any, like, more info on applying for specific grants for that. Even contacting insurance companies. Okay. Ah, hmm. oh, so tell more. I would contact, like, Blue Cross, um, United Way, um, what else, healthcare? Uh, State Farm? Yeah. Um, uh, who, oh man. If this is, this is, they're paying for that if somebody's going to, you know, a therapist or this is part of therapy. Listen, I know people that insurance, their health insurance pays for their, their wigs. There's always loopholes, so I would definitely have a bit of experience. Um, but, um, I'm sorry, what's your name? But yeah, Terry. Um, even Terry. Terry. Have you reached out to REI? You know what? I do. I used to work with an organization that gets grants through REI, so I know all of my Okay. So I feel like um, start off with those companies that would actually have an interest, or like Patagonia, right? Because Patagonia, they're a B Corp, aren't they, Rebecca? Yeah. So B Corp. I don't know it to the T, um, but just 
real quick. There are corporations where they've gone through this stringent process that pretty much they've been certified that they commit X amount of money to um, helping underserved communities and they're paying their workers living wage. More good stuff that I don't know, but um, they, they have, a, they want to um, give back, contribute to the social good. So um, Patagonia is just up there in terms of um, uh, being there for the public good. And so pursuing organizations like that. So like, if you want to jot down B Corp, B C O R P S, that would be and good. also contacting like the community impact department at different universities. Mm. Um, good one. Like you said, there's a lot of university, a lot, a certain amount of money to give back to the community. Um, even hospitals, I know a lot of hospitals get grants as well. Um, just thinking outside of the box of where you're getting this money from. Right. Um, if I go to Burger King, I'm gonna say, listen, that crown is art. I'm gonna figure it out. Like, so if you, as long as you can write your mission statement and your impact to align with whoever, whoever you're contacting, and that might change between a university versus a hospital versus an arts um, organization, um, you could always switch up your word there. And then, um, I wanted to chime in on what Rebecca was saying in terms of reaching out to schools. So I'm originally from San Diego and an artist that I know, um, she's had like two or three schools contract with her where she redid the playground, for example, um, to make it more inviting, like the hopscotch was more like leaves, for example. And she had gotten one contract, word was out, two and three just right off the bat. So seriously, um, the note on reaching out to schools, that's a really good, um, that's a really good suggestion from Rebecca. That's a very good suggestion. I have to, colleges. Yeah, colleges, right. Especially if your students are gonna be coming to you yeah. mm. then. Anything else? Yeah, what's up? So in terms of like the actual grant writing process, do you have any suggestions on like tools for like reviewing grants that are written before we submit them or like organization tools or processing systems to keep grants organized? Ah, keeping grants organized. So you could um, think Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Unless Rebecca, you wanna, because where they're at, it doesn't make sense to go more complicated than that, right. in my opinion. Like if you got 10 different grants out at the same time, you would want to have like express, um, right. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah Excel and spreadsheet. Like the due date, mm -hmm. um, when you applied. Decision, when you are going to follow up with them, like, hi, how are you? Like, you know, I submitted, because I've learned that our adulthood is literally checking emails and follow-ups. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> follow-up in that personal, connection with that person is great. And I want to find a link. Um, so the city of New Haven, their neighborhood vitality grant, not only was it a grant process, but they actually had a 12 week class where you learn how to write the grant with the people that were picking who was getting the, oh. getting the making the selections. Um, and that is free. So Alice Ian, who um, ended up being sick and couldn't make it here, mm -hmm. Those um, classes are free online for up to a year. Um, and I'll give you the link right now. Can you say that again? I'm gonna airdrop it, so everybody's gonna oh. oh. um, So Alice Ann, so before the, the grant was even available, they had a 12 week, once a week, four hour meeting with the person that was in charge of picking who was gonna win. So it was literally a straight shot of this is how you should write it. Mm -hmm. You were able to write drafts, etc. All those classes are free online. I'm here dropping them. If you don't have your job, just come see me after and I can send the link to you directly. Um, but those classes are still available online. Um, another thing that we're trying to do to make things equitable, because I can't pay anybody to write a grant for me. So things like this, having this program prior to the grant, or making your grant, I think our grant is like a Google Docs with like five questions. Because you don't need all that information rah-rah of 42 pages. Um, so being an advocate too for the arts, going to your budget meetings and going to different things like, listen, like 
these changes need to be made in order for it to be equitable, because you know, cultural equity and diversion is like the hot words now. So we're gonna, you want, you, oh, you really wanna do that? Well, these are the things that you need to do. And demand that these people make those changes. So, yeah. everyone got it? I did it. Okay, another time. I got it. But those classes are free and it literally breaks down like all the steps of how to write a yeah, it says, Alison had put down that she has it on Departments of Arts, Arts, Culture, and Tourism website. Is that right? Okay. And she's got recordings from sessions, resources, et cetera. Okay. And back to what you were saying. So on that spreadsheet, I want to have down the funder, their focus areas, um, how much the um, award is, um, what's their decision process? Are they going to reply back in a month? I think I replied that. <laughs> uh, and um, rationale for applying, why you think you want to apply. And, and not being scared to ask if you don't get it, like, oh, you know, how can I have better this? And getting that feedback so then for next time it's like, okay, I, I got the blueprint of what they're looking for. Also, some of these funders, they don't have deadlines. Yeah. It's rolling. So, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't have time this month, but maybe in the summer I'll have time. And if it's a rolling, that means, you know, it's, um, they're welcoming applications. Um, that's something to keep on the spreadsheet. And when you're ready, you can focus and pursue that grant right there. So, um, yeah. Are there any other questions? How, oh, yeah, what's up? Is there any keywords that you would, like, when you're writing a grant, is there any, like, keywords that you I kind of see and, like, yeah, that would pop up? Like, so, when they post the grant, they're going to write a description of what it's about. Copy that, those words from their description, put them in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Same thing when you go to apply for a job, right? When you see a job description, mm -hmm. like, oh, willing to do it. Oh, oh, yeah. Switching it up a little bit, but overall, like having those keywords that you see in the actual grant description, adding it into your mix. And you want to answer the question? I mean, I know coming out of my mouth, it sounds like, why did she say that? But I can't tell you how many times um, I've seen applicants, they do not answer the question. And it's really basic, common sense. But if you don't answer the question, that funder is not going to continue on, and it's just going to move on to the next application. So you want to make sure to read the question carefully. Even, even if you think it's simple, just read the question carefully and answer that uh, question. Um, because, like I said earlier, um, your mission isn't enough to get a grant. And so, um, you really want to um, satisfy what the funder is looking for. In terms of keywords, um, Rebecca uh, hit the nail on the head in terms of pretty much taking their narrative and just copy and paste it and make sure you're emphasizing those words. That's how I see it, emphasizing those words. But again, just what we were talking about earlier in terms of Right now, it's about social, emotional, and mental health and um, reaching out to underserved communities. But I just feel like reaching out to our youth, too, like now more than ever. And arts is just one way to reach out to our youth. Um, so like for me, those are some of the key words that pop into my mind in terms of if I was writing for one of you all, that sort of thing. Anything else? Okay, well, Rebecca and I are here if you want to ask more questions, but thanks for taking the time to um, come over. We very much appreciate it. Yeah.